Hey Doombots, Tony Scongili here with part two of the TCP milestone series, 2 million TCP. Now, if you remember from the previous one, this is based off of not any particular advice or best practices. This is just kind of an amalgamation of all 200 plus roster reviews I've done regarding where players' rosters were in the general vicinity. What I do is I look at the reviews I've done both then and recently and I do some comparisons to see where players are. This is independent of spending because unlike time, your power, your TCP, uh, when you reach whatever the milestone is, 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, etc., uh, it, it really doesn't matter how much you spent to get there. You know, like you spend a lot of money, you build up roughly the same or similar characters. Uh, they look the same. So whether you've done this over three months, six months, a year, ultimately at about 2 million TCP, this is where uh, most of the rosters I've seen from reviews have kind of lined up. Now, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I got your feedback from the first video, and you had asked for a little bit more guidance at this point. Uh, so I'm going to say now, if your roster doesn't look like uh, what I'm about to show you, that might be the guidance uh, that you already need. You know, kind of work on unlocking or obtaining these characters, or at least getting them to a point where they are a meaningful uh, team for your roster. And I will also add in some where to go now at the end of this video. So if you're just interested in that, jump right to the end, probably the last minute or two, you should be fine. I might even put an annotation up. We'll find out. Uh, the other thing is at no point in time do I want you to look at this and say, wow, these must be the power of the character someone at 2 million TCP. At the time of this recording, my roster is about 5 million TCP, so I don't want you to look at a 73k invisible woman and say, there's no way someone at 2 million TCP. Correct. I'm using my roster as kind of a divining rod to show the characters, the legendary unlocks, or representations of entire teams that most people either have uh, unlocked at least or put some work on, and I'll go into that. So jumping right in now, uh, we're going to first start with the legendaries. Now the interesting thing is the first one was kind of a tight squeeze. Most people at 1 million only have about two legendary characters, official legendary characters, not including, you know, Electra, Iron Man, and Crossbones. But once you get to 2 million, you'll notice that it becomes a lot more likely you have more than the bare minimum uh, legendaries. And that's because as a result of what you've been capable of doing over the last million TCP, you've accrued a lot of additional shards through opening more mega orbs from Blitz or from Dark Dimension or just from playing the game. Uh, it's not very likely that most people are 100% done with Dark Dimension, pro Dark Dimension 1 prior to uh, hitting 2 million TCP, but I've seen enough people that have that it's a reasonable assumption at this point uh, that players who are just hitting 2 million are close enough or within reasonably uh, spitting distance of completing Dark Dimension 1 and would now be working on Dark Dimension 2. What you see here is a couple of legendaries that are predominantly solid across the 15 or so rosters that I use to develop this list. Uh, Invisible Woman and Shuri both require roughly the exact same characters. Well, as a matter of fact, the characters you use to unlock Invisible Woman, you can also use to unlock Shuri. Shuri has an additional four characters available to her pool. Five if you count Symbiote Spider-Man, I believe. But it stands to reason that most people, if they have one, are pretty close to, if not immediately have the other. So Invisible Woman and Shuri are two characters that most likely are unlocked in around your first 2 million TCP. That does not mean their teams are. Invisible Woman's character, uh, entire teams at the time of this video have just become available, and Shuri's team is not good, particularly. So... It's unlikely you've stopped progress on, on anything else you're working on to work on the Wakandans. Star Wars and Nick Fury 
are probably stronger versions than they were because you've kind of settled into the three month legendary cycle now and you're kind of working on characters uh, passively a little bit. Maybe you're opening a couple more orbs or maybe you're doing better in Greek raids than you were and they happen to have the characters you need. All in all, it's a little bit more likely that you've maybe progressed a little bit more into your star with Nick Fury. One or both of them get to six star. So you are probably in the uh, jumping distance of Dark Dimension 1 anyway with one of those teams. Uh, and then, of course, Magneto uh, tends to be a very high impact character you see among 2 million TCP rosters. And that's that's where the hard stop comes. And obviously there are more legendary characters and unique characters. I've tried to avoid them because there are a lot of times what people don't understand is characters like Coulson and Captain Marvel, because their events were one and done and they became very very difficult to obtain after that it's unlikely that most players would have them at this point even though a lot of the reviews i've done had those characters uh, available so i have to make a reasonable assumption that it's unlikely that a player starting you know today at 2 million tcp would have very easily obtained captain marvel that said i don't decide on whether you spend or not so you may have characters like that but when we get up after the legendaries, I've kind of chosen individual characters, both to represent either their team or the, the likelihood of where you progress in the story. For example, Black Panther. It is very likely you've at least unlocked a Black Panther at this time. You've definitely, probably, most likely, almost certainly uh, been able to farm his node to unlock him. So you might have worked a little bit towards progressing Black Panther. Uh, Jessica Jones, obviously a holdover from the Defenders, whether you've worked on them or just passively obtained them. She's a great character, so she represents almost the entirety of the Defenders team. Ms. Marvel, same as before. Most people had them at 1 million. At this point, you've probably rounded out a, a Brawler's roster, whatever that may be. Maybe the leftover of the Spider-Verse characters, or, or you found a place for Deadpool and Gamora because you don't need them you know, on their respective teams. Uh, Ronan tends to be a character you have unlocked at this time, either through raid orbs or some arbitrary mechanism of, of unlock, and mainly to use those Kree minions now as either a Blitz team or very easy, low-level uh, war team. So you tend to see a bunch of Ronins now where they are, maybe three or four star, but you definitely have the makings of a Kree team. Loki most likely will become available to you. It is right before the hardest fight in the game. I know plenty of people who've beaten that fight uh, very early. I know an equal number of people who just three-starred the final, the vision node. So uh, that being the hardest fight, well, at the time anyway, in this game, the Loki fight, a little bit less difficult and uh, more likely to have had access. Plus, Loki's a really fun character. So I've seen a lot of Lokis in these teams. Uh, so I'm going to just throw him in there. That does not represent the Asgardian team, as at the time of this video, three of them are completely inaccessible. One, Hela, might become available soon, but that's another story from another time. Uh, this does not have another row. This only has three rows instead of the previous four because there's no real reason to favorite 15 characters to showcase that. But Iron Man, you definitely have unlocked him at this point because of Nick Fury and the shield minions you've been working on. But you, he also represents a good portion of the Power Armor team. Now, you definitely have had the opportunity to unlock Rescue through Blitz Orbs. Uh, Vision is maybe... He's a very inexpensive, and by that I mean a 45 shard unlock. So it's possible that a Blitz or an Orb has unlocked Vision for you. So you pretty much have the makings of a Power Armor team, which uh, you may not have invested in because they're all tech characters, and so is Star-Lord and some other high impact characters, but you probably are close enough. Most players I see have, at the very least, an Iron Man and a Falcon at a decent level. Uh, Green Goblin is representative of both the Spider-Verse and the Sinister Six teams that you probably have in order to have unlocked Invisible Woman and Shuri. Working on these characters is kind of a vanity project. It's very unlikely most players at 2 million have a particularly strong Sinister Six or Spider-Verse team, but that might change in time. It's just always important to remember that 
they you definitely weren't getting at least Invisible Woman and probably not Shuri without Green Goblin and one of those teams. So most people do have at least some level of investment in those characters. Uh, Doctor Strange is another very similar to Loki character. At this point, he became easier to farm for most players between the one and two million point. And while you do not have access to the other members of his completed team, he does stand out as a very high impact character that a lot of players do have, more so than, say, Hydra minions or, or A minions. Most players, if they do have A minions, they even to this day, they haven't really had the time to invest in them at, you know, even at 4 million TCP or so. So uh, it, Doctor Strange really is more of a marquee. I'm going to skip the next one and go straight to Falcon uh, in kind of the same conversation with Iron Man. Some people are doing some early preparation for U7 and Falcon is a very reasonable and meaningful character in those modes. He's also not too bad in the early stages of U6 as you're building up other teams and uh, as a global character, pretty decent all in all. Relatively easy farm. It's very likely that a lot of players have access to Falcon and rescue, etc, etc. Uh, and the last thing I've included in this is Minerva. Minerva's strange, right? She's literally unfarmable. You cannot get her. Uh, you have to get lucky. Multiple times, more likely than not. Either really lucky once uh, to unlock her, or uh, pretty lucky on numerous occasions. She's a 45 shard unlock, and the only consistent way to get her is through premium orbs. So, uh, that said, usually at around 2 million power, I've seen quite a bit of people with a Minerva. Now, does that mean they bought her? I don't know. Does that mean that within six months of playing the game, maybe nine months, the the likelihood of getting a Minerva either through the premiums or arbitrary events or orbs goes up? Maybe. I, I can't say. What I will say is that the roster reviews I've done recently of people with two million power and recently, well after her event, uh, has gone off, which was about a year ago, definitely have her. So it's a safe assumption to say that she might be questionable, but since the last five or six reviews I've done, they've had Minerva, I'm going to include her as a key component, mainly because of how important she is for the next stage. So this is a hopefully helpful snapshot of where most 2 million TCP rosters kind of land Two, and again, it's it's close, maybe not exactly two, maybe 2.1, sometimes, you know, maybe 1.9, but at around 2 million points, these are the milestone characters you expect to have. Now, for the next million points, as you're walking into 3 million, which of course will be the next video, your goal is, is relatively simple. You have now built a wide enough potential roster that a lot of the game modes are very open to you. And by that, I mean, you now have the likelihood of uh, being a meaningful contributor in war. And for more information of what to do with your teams as you go on, I recommend you look at my war series. Uh, I will put it in the annotations right up here or there, whatever. We'll figure it out. You also are probably able to do more than just one simple lane in any of the uh, Greek raids, the Alpha, the Beta, or the Gamma, which all have either, you know, origin tag or an affiliate tag, something that you definitely have access to more than one particular path. Some players don't. Some players have built very tall. At this point, uh, I don't think any of those players are finding great success. I think that the players who have the wider rosters, even though they're not amazingly strong are finding more success as far as things that involve their alliance so between war and the specialty raids including but not limited to you know u6 progress you've definitely found yourself in a great spot so right now going from 2 million to 3 million you have only two uh, priorities eh, two and a half but the half doesn't count the first priority is now you want unlock phoenix so most of what you're trying to do in this game because five star is important for characters to unlock and six star is important for doing dark dimension one but not really much else plusing stars isn't a very high priority in this game unless they're you know the characters are necessary for an unlock stars don't 
truly improve character power or usability as much as, say, gear and Stark tech and all the stuff that comes in time anyway. Red stars, obviously. So what you will see is unlocking Phoenix uh, is almost, I don't want to say necessary, but one of the most high impact things you can do for a roster at this level. Phoenix will now allow you the ability to push through the higher stages of arena, will give you one uh, or close to one guaranteed victory team in war. Uh, it will give you a phenomenal blitz team. It will allow you to progress on the X-Men specific nodes uh, as well as the mutant specific nodes and raids as Phoenix is that powerful. And she's not terrible in some of the different versions of Dark Dimension as you progress. She just kind of hard caps the amount of time you can spend working on it. And speaking of Dark Dimension, the next thing you want to work on, or probably have been already at this point, is Dark Dimension 2. That is pretty much the only end game we have. Now, at the time of this video, we do have Dark Dimension 3. It's terrible. None of the rewards matter. Don't even worry about that. Don't even think about it. Just, just worry about where your uh, next and most important impactful step you can make is, which is, of course, unlocking Ultron. Regardless of what some people say, Ultron is still a phenomenal character that will help you complete content and will make you enjoy this game significantly more. And as a result of that, you are required to have five characters at gear tier 13. Now, again, at the time of this video, orange gear is scarce. Uh, not as scarce as it was when Dark Dimension 2 had first come out, still scarce enough that it doesn't feel like you're making much progress towards it unless you're spending money or cores etc etc that said because of where your roster is right now you have quite a few options regarding what teams you want to do this next part is just my advice there is no correct answer there are just uh, versions of the characters that I recommend more than others or teams, etc. And uh, for those who don't know, I auto fight Dark Dimension 2 nodes with teams that are suggested by my stream all the time as I go take bathroom breaks. So I kind of have enough reps in, especially now that you can uh, bring characters up to level 75 and maybe have enough time to get them higher star level to know that the fights are have clearly become easier as the game has progressed. Uh, star Lord you already have, and you probably have him at around six star at this point, uh, which means he should be strong enough to anchor your team. If you happen to have Minerva, she is basically a cheat code for Dark Dimension. So that's two characters. If you don't, you're probably going to want to play closer on the sustain line, which is great because the next two characters you can easily use for Dark Dimension are Rocket and Groot. Now, you don't have to bring in Rocket. He's not that important, and he's another tech character. Three tech characters might be a lot of materials. You're going to want to lean into your Dark Dimension 1 rewards to make sure whether or not it's a great decision for you. But even if we just take the other three, Star Lord, Minerva, and Groot, that leaves you with a very, very, very sustainable and safe team that will allow you to continuously win with Minerva. The last two characters are kind of your choice based on who you like or maybe just what the rewards uh, you receive. I would recommend the last two characters be Invisible Woman as she is an incredibly strong uh, protector that gives you the ability to uh, remove debuffs and get through pesky stealths as well as put up shields that the characters in Dark Dimension 2, they have more health, but they don't do much more damage. So the, the shields that she puts up can be very meaningful. Uh, and then the last character, uh, basically whoever you want. I remember back in the day I used Juggernaut. You may want to use Jessica Jones as another energy battery or Shuri, or you may want to hedge and start using characters you might want to bring up for Dark Dimension 3. Maybe. That's up to you. You may have a particular fan favorite character like Green Goblin or Iron Man. I wouldn't recommend it, uh, but you could. There's no real wrong answer as to who the fifth character is because the core Star-Lord, Groot, Invisible Woman, and Minerva team is pretty much the four-piece cheat code to completing Dark Dimension relatively quickly. And if you have any questions about 
how I know that, feel free to stop by my stream and ask any of the 15 people that uh, have done it in like one day or so because of that kind of team. Um, other than that, you're really just working on progressing the rest of your teams up to a point. And whatever that point is, is very simply when they can do something fun for you. Uh, I would say that as you work towards 3 million, you'll notice that where you used to leave characters off was a little bit less uh, rewarding now as it was then. So you may want to bring entire teams up to 30k points each as opposed to 20k. Uh, you may start working on characters you've left behind, like Hydra characters if the rework ends up sticking, or uh, aim if you get lucky and graviton becomes readily available for you you know there, there's a lot of of changes that can happen but the two most important things you, uh, i've found going from two million to three million was shoring up the unlock of ultron and guaranteeing a phoenix relatively quickly when we get into the thir uh, three million video you'll be able to see a little bit more of what most players at around three million tcp have kind of where the game goes from there uh, for now. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, by the way, if, again, if you have any content questions or comments, if you if my advice wasn't what you were looking for, feel free to ask down. I will, of course, respond to them. And again, if you don't like my hat, I don't know why, but feel free to comment. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangili, and I will catch you later.